Hello students, in this video we shall see how we can design context free grammars for a given question. So we will take a couple of examples and construct CFGs for the same. I will take two examples in this video that is constructing a CFG for a language L equal to A to the power N where N is greater than or equal to 0 and a slight modification for the same question that is N greater than or equal to 1. Before we construct the context free grammars, let us have a recap of the definition of context free grammars. Any context free grammar, say G, is a quadruple having four components in its definition. The four components are V, Sigma, R and S, where V is the rule alphabet. The rule alphabet consists of two symbols, that is the non-terminal symbols and the terminal symbols. We know that the non-terminal symbols are those symbols which appear in the grammar, but at the end when we derive the strings of the language, they are supposed to disappear. So these are the symbols which are in the grammar, but they do not appear in the strings of the language. The second component is the set of terminals. So here we can tell that the set of terminals is a subset of V. The third component is a set of rules. The set of rules is considered as a finite subset of V minus sigma set cross V star. And fourth component is the start symbol. So the start symbol can be any element from the set V minus sigma. We know that a rule takes the format x tends to y. So x can be considered as the left hand side and y is considered as the right hand side. If we were to take the relation description of the rule, we can see that we have v minus sigma cross v star relation. So v minus sigma is considered as the left hand side and v star is the right hand side. What does v consist of? v consists of non-terminals and terminals. And what does sigma consist of? It consists of only the terminal symbols. So left hand side is v minus sigma. So at the end what remains? It is only the non-terminals which remain. Okay, And we also know that the left hand side is a single non-terminal. On the left hand side we can write only a single non-terminal. Now let us go to the right hand side description. V consists of non-terminals and terminals. So what will be V star? Any combination of non-terminals and terminals. So this relation is the one which sets apart the context-free grammars from the other types of grammars which are available in automata theory. Let us take our first example. That is, to construct a context-free grammar for a language L is equal to A to the power N where N is greater than or equal to 0. Now, we can design context-free grammars in two ways. The first method is to construct the DFSM and then convert the transitions into the context-free grammar. Or we can directly write the grammar. We shall first take the first method. That is, construct DFSM and then convert into a CFG. We will just see how we can construct CFG through this method. Now, the DFSM for the given language, we have the language L is equal to A to the power N, where n is greater than or equal to 0. So, the language consists of strings. Now, when n is equal to 0, a to the power 0 will be a empty string. Then, when n is equal to 1, we have a to the power 1. So, it is a single a. Similarly, when n is equal to 2, it will be a to the power 2. It will be 
two a's and this goes on as three a's etc now how do we construct the dfsm we know that the minimum string here is epsilon so the start state itself is the final state and then we can have any number of a's in this start state so the dfsm of the language is given like this we have only one state that is the start state and since the minimum string here is sigma the start state itself is the final state so we can write that we have a start state s and our final state also is s so we have seen the dfsm for the given language where we had a uh, one state that is we had the start state itself as our final state so there is one transition which is defined that is delta of s comma a equal to s that is when we are in state s if we see a a we go to state s now this relation or this transition function has to be converted into the grammar format and how can we convert it is we take the first symbol we take the first symbol the first symbol is a non terminal symbol because it is a state okay and we write this as the left hand side of the rule then we use the arrow symbol and then take the input symbol whatever is the input symbol so here we have a as the input symbol and the next state that is the state in which uh, to which the transition takes place and we concatenate them okay and form the right hand side of the rule so the rule is written like this the start state or the state in which we are we take the input symbol and the state to which we go so this is how we get the uh, uh, rule of our cfg so this is the first rule the second rule can be defined for this final state because it's a minimum string so we have a, a rule which is defined for the minimum uh, string or uh, of the language so here minimum string is epsilon so we can remain in state s and it will accept epsilon so this becomes our second rule so final state also we include an epsilon uh, relation on the right hand side so the cfg is given as s tends to sigma therefore if a dfsm is like this then Uh, the cfg for the language a to the power n where n is greater than or equal to 0 is given as g is equal to v sigma r and s where v consists of the rule alphabet that is a set of non terminals and terminals sigma consists of only the terminals rule r consists of a set of rules and s is the start symbol therefore v is equal to we have a uh, one non terminal here that is s and we have one terminal that is a so v is s comma a sigma is equal to only the terminals so here in this case our terminal symbol is only a therefore it is a single a r we have seen that we have two rules therefore r is equal to s tends to as or s tends to sigma either we can write a rule one at a time or we can club all the rules together and write it in a single row so even this is valid s tends to as and s tends to epsilon so r is equal to this set it's a rule set and s here is our start symbol So this is how we construct uh, a CFG using the DFSM method. The second method is to write the grammar directly. 
by analyzing the language which is given. So here we can uh, see that uh, we have a language L is equal to a to the power n and n is greater than equal to 0. So this representation tells us that the language should support strings made up of symbol a. So we have a language made up of strings of A's. Okay. And how many a number of strings are possible or how many number of A's are possible in each of the string? We can have n number of A's in each string. So it is actually the concept of repeating A's n number of times in each string. So let us construct the language. So we have L equal to when n is equal to 0, it is epsilon. When n equal to 1, it is a. Now, when n equal to 2, we are repeating a 2 times. When n is equal to 3, we are repeating a 3 times. And this goes on. This process goes on for n number of a's. Now, when we construct rules for a grammar, we can consider this as a note. One rule has to be constructed for the minimum or the least string that is generated. So in this case, least string is sigma, right? Let us take the start symbol as S. So one rule is written as S tends to sigma. This is our first rule that is a rule which is written for the least string this string after that the process remains as repeating a's so here we have a repeated once here we have a written twice here we have a written thrice etc so for the sec for the other rules to be constructed we can tell that we have the start symbol and whenever we see S, we generate only one A at a time. We generate only one A at a time. So if we have to generate two A's, Then repeat the rule twice, right? So we could tell that when we have to generate n number of a's, we just repeat writing a's. So we make use of the concept of recursion or recursive rules or we also call them as recursive rules rules. So here we can tell that we see 1a for every time we call a s. So in case we want the second a we have to call s again. So in this question we had made use of the concept of recursive rules. Recursive rules are uh, or in recursive rules, we make use of, of a variable recursively 
to obtain the resultant strain. And we had seen that we had obtained two rules. So we had one rule as S tends to epsilon and the second rule was S tends to AS. Now just let us take one example and see whether this um, uh, the uh, strings for the language A to the power N where N is greater than or equal to are generated. So we had um, L is equal to sigma A, AA, 3 A's, 4 A's, etc. Let us see whether these uh, strings can be generated. So if we were to take the first, since we have a minimum string, so we can take directly S tends to epsilon in order to obtain this. What about this single A? How do we derive a single A? So we can derive a single A by taking the relation S tends to or S derives AS and this S is replaced by epsilon so that we can get A. Now let us see how we can derive AA. We take the relation S tends to or S derives A S then replace this S again by the rule AS so we have AS and then we can replace this S by and the epsilon symbol so we get AA. What about three A's? Again it's the same process so S derives AS this S is re replaced by the rule AS again so in our third step also we have to replace S by AS rule and in the fourth step this S can be replaced by epsilon so we get three A's. So we can tell that these are the two rules of our grammar. So we had seen that when we were generating two A's. I'll just take one example. So it, when we wanted to generate two A's, we replaced this by the first rule which we had and then we replaced this by epsilon so we got is. So what did we do here? The production body of S was called recursively, right? And when we have such recursive rules defined in the grammar, then we can call such grammar as recursive grammar. So recursive grammar has got recursive rules in it. Okay. So we can conclude uh, the grammar by writing G is equal to V sigma R S. These are the four components of the grammar because we know that the definition of a grammar is a quadruple where V, what were the non-terminals which we used? It was a single non-terminal that is S. And what was, what was the terminals which we, uh, we had? It was a single A. The alphabet, uh, the input alphabet set was only A. Then we can write, uh, we'll rewrite the rules and we had our start symbol as S where R is equal to, since it is a rule set, we can write S tends to A capital S or S tends to epsilon. So this is how we construct the uh, context-free grammar for a language L equal to A to the power N where N is greater than equal to 0. Let us take our next example. 
that is to construct a CFG for a language L is equal to A to the power n where n is greater than or equal to 1. Now this language can also be defined in another way that is L is equal to A to the power n where n is greater than 0. We can have the language defined even in this way. We know that uh, we can have two ways of construction of uh, CFG. We will see both the ways for this particular example too. Now first we shall construct the language. So we have L equal to when n is equal to 1 we have a single a. Similarly when n equal to 2 we have two a's. When n is equal to 3 we have three a's and this goes on. So the rules of this grammar will have one rule for the minimum string. And is this grammar recursive grammar? Yes, because we repeat A's n number of times. Here we have repeated A three times. Here we have repeated A two times. So in case we have n is equal to 4, then we repeat A four times. So we have the concept of recursiveness. So another rule is written for the recursiveness or we could tell it's a recursive rule. So rule number one which we construct for the minimum string or the least string minimum string or we have for the least string. So that would be if we were to consider s as our start symbol so we have s tends to a and we know that in recursion we generate only one a at a time. So the next or the recursive rule is we are generating one A at a time and then in case we want to generate more A's we call A recursive, we call S recursively. So these are the two rules if we were to write the grammar directly. Therefore we can conclude the grammar as G is equal to V sigma R and S where uh, V is S comma A, sigma is A and the rule set R is S tends to A S or S tends to A. Here the minimum string is A when N is equal to 1.